Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In this video, I'll be explaining about rocks, the different kinds of rocks, namely igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic rocks. And in the end, it will be rock cycle. So rocks are hard minerals, which are found both within the earth's crust as well as above the earth's crust. Rocks are found in mantle too, but they are in semi-solid state. The major constituents of rocks are Pletspar and quartz, which are rich in silica content. Other minerals like magnesium, iron, and other metal minerals are abundantly found in rocks. Petrology is science of rocks, and petrologist is the one who studies rocks. On the basis of formation, rocks are mainly divided into igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks, and metamorphic rocks. We we'll study all these things in detail. And intrusive rocks are the rocks which are formed directly from magma or lava. That is when magma or lava solidifies, they give rise to igneous rocks. Depending on whether the rocks solidify within the earth's crust or above the earth's crust, they are divided into intrusive rocks. The best example is granite and extrusive rocks. Basalt is example for extrusive rocks. And basalt is the major constituent of Deccan traps. The intrusive rocks which solidify within the earth crust solidify slowly giving rise to very large grains. So granite has very large grains or very large crystals. Whereas those rocks which solidify on the surface solidify much faster giving rise to small grains or small crystals like basalt or Deccan traps. And the most important property of these rocks is that they are unfossiliferous or do not contain any fossils because they are formed at very high temperatures. And based on the place and time taken in cooling, the igneous rocks are divided into plutonic rocks or volcanic rocks. Plutonic rocks are nothing but intrusive rocks, that is, the rocks that are formed due to the cooling of magma deep below the earth's crust. Whereas volcanic rocks are ex extrusive rocks, where the lava which flows out cools uh, above the earth's crust, giving rise to extrusive rocks. The next example is granite which is formed from slow cooling of magma that is giving rise to big crystals. And the example for volcanic rocks is basalt, which is the major constituent of Deccan traps. And this rock is formed when magma, uh, sorry, lava which flows out above the earth's crust cools quickly giving rise to small crystals of rocks. We have seen slow cooling gives rise to big crystals, whereas rapid cooling prevents crystallization or they might be very small they might possess very small crystals or they might be very fine, fine have fine grains and as these rocks are cooled below the earth's crust they are much denser and darker in color as mainly because of the presence of iron oxides etc and whereas volcanic rocks are less dense and they are lighter in color and they are basic in nature whereas plutonic rocks are acidic in nature and those rocks which cool between the plutonic rocks and volcanic rocks are called as intermediate rocks or dike rocks. We have discussed about different kinds of uh, rock forms uh, below the earth's crust where magma cools giving rise to various structures like sill, dike, lecolith, becolith, uh, batholith, etc. And they are semi-crystalline in nature that is intermediate, the crystal size is intermediate to that of uh, plutonic and volcanic rocks. And based on chemical nature, igneous rocks are divided into acidic rocks and basic rocks. Acidic rocks are rich in silica. Silica consists of 80% of the rock. Whereas the basic rocks are poor in silica. They mainly consist, uh, consist of magnesium and iron, iron and various other metal oxides. As they are very rich in uh, the silica content, they are very viscous and it gives acidic nature to the rock. As they are very viscous, they do not flow for longer distances and cools very quickly giving rise to very uh, big crystals or grains whereas basic rocks which are low in silica content are less viscous and they can flow for a larger distances and they cool slowly thus giving rise to bigger crystals one good example is mount fuji in japan which is a volcanic mountain which is formed due to uh, continuous accumul accumulation of uh, cooled magma and the example of basic rocks the landform formed by basic rocks is Deccan traps which is a plateau this uh, Deccan traps mainly consists of basalt which is basic in nature 
and due to the less content of heavy metals like iron and magnesium etc these rocks are lighter in color for example is granite whereas due to the presence of high metals especially metal oxides these rocks are dark in color that is basic rocks are dark in color and these are few examples of acidic rocks granite quartz flat, uh, flat spar all these are very rich in silica whereas the example for basic rocks are basalt gabbro and dolerite which are very poor in sil silica content and as these rocks forms bigger crystals and they are formed due to very slow cooling of magma they are very brittle or hard and they are very resistant to weathering whereas comparatively the other kind of rock that is basic rocks are relatively uh, vulnerable to weathering and they can be relatively easily weathered and coming to economic significance of uh, igneous rocks they are rich in metal ores uh, that is they form the major source of metal ores this is because the lava which comes from deep inside the earth's crust carries a lot of uh, metal content in it and once these come out and solidify give rise to a rock which will be obviously be rich in metal ores and various metals found are iron nickel copper etc and single element metals like gold platinum and single element not non metallic minerals like diamonds etc amygdales are bubbles within the rocks interior in which uh, metal constituents settle and hence these rocks or amygdales will be rich in certain metals especially gold platinum silver etc are found in this this form of amygdales and the old rocks of indian peninsula that is the peninsula region it is rich with crystallized crystallized minerals or uh, metal minerals like iron uh, copper etc whereas the western region, western india semi arid region parts of uh, rajasthan gujarat etc are rich in acid uh, acidic rocks like granite which are of uh, huge economic significance and the next important types of rocks are sedimentary rocks they are fo mainly formed from igneous rocks as well as there is one more kind of rocks called metamorphic rocks when all these more uh, rocks undergo denudation denudational processes like erosion weathering etc their surfaces are lost and these surfaces give rise to sediments and these sediments undergo lithification or rock formation giving rise to sedimentary rocks the best examples are sandstone and shale and depending on the kind of formation there are three types mainly mechanically formed sedimentary rocks the best examples are sand, uh, sandstone limestone shale loess etc loess are the ones carried uh, where uh, the sediments are carried by wind and limestone are the ones are the ones where sediments are carried mainly by water and organically formed sedimentary rocks which are rich in coal and very acid carboni carbonaceous content and chemically formed are the ones which undergo chemical changes and hence the rock is formed like calcium carbonate or limestone potash etc <coughs> though the earth 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 surface is covered by mainly by sedimentary rocks they cover about 75% of the earth's crust volumetrically they occupy only 5% of the earth's crust that is if this is earth's crust they are present more, more or less only on the surface whereas in the interiors they are mainly made up of igneous or metamorphic rocks and sediments are found only on the surfaces and tillites are the ones are sediments formed due to ice depo uh, glacial action whereas loess are the ones which are uh, se uh, sediments formed due to wind action and based on the kind of formation sedimentary rocks are classified into mechanically formed ones chemically formed sedimentary rocks and organically formed sedimentary rocks mechanically formed sedimentary rocks are formed under the influence of mechanical agents like running water wind ocean currents glacial action etc and the first kind is arenaceous rocks which have moss and and the particles are bigger in size and they are hard example is sandstone the arenaceous rocks because of high content of sand are permeable or they allow a mo uh, more amount of water to seep in that is they have, uh, allow the percolation of water the other kind is argillaceous rocks which consists of more clay 
and they are fine grained they are softer and impermeable that is they allow less amount of water to seep in or sometimes that uh, they do not allow any percolation one example is shale and the other kind is chemically formed sedimentary rocks these kind of rocks are formed mainly due to evaporation of water which is rich in mineral content giving rise to structures like stalactites and stalagmites the ones that are formed that are attached to the roof are called stalactites whereas the ones that form on the base is called as stalagmites that is when water which is rich in minerals like calcium carbonate etc or limestone etc evaporates it leaves behind the mineral content which accumulates over over a period of time giving rise to these kind of structures and when the remaining water falls below even here evaporation takes place leaving behind mineral content and the other kind are organically formed sedimentary rocks the best examples of coal and limestone when plant remains are buried deep below sedimentary strata they undergo chemical and physical changes giving rise to coal and lime likewise when marine animals or marine organisms are buried deep uh, below various kind of sediments they undergo chemical changes giving rise to petroleum hence organically formed sedimentary rocks are quite important uh, when uh, which provide mainly uh, minerals which are rich in hydrocarbons and coming to coal which is an important mineral the organic mineral there are mainly different types of coal the first one is peat which uh, and lignite they have very least, uh, little carbon content the other one bituminous consists of about 60% carbon whereas anthracite is the very uh, pure uh, very good quality coal which contains about 80 to 90% of carbon and once this anthracite undergoes uh, further chemical changes it gives rise to graphite which is uh, 100% carbon so organically formed sedimentary rocks are important in forming in giving us organic minerals like coal and petroleum and coming to the characteristics of sedimentary rocks they are they occur in layers or strata that is they are stratified rocks because they are formed uh, over a period of time due to accumulation of sediments and they are fossiliferous rocks unlike igneous rocks which are unfossiliferous that is sedimentary rocks contains fossils of plants and animals and they are generally porous whereas igneous rocks are completely uh, impermeable that is they do not allow any percolation of water whereas sedimentary rocks are uh, mostly porous and they do allow percolation of water and at the same time they have marks of various mechanical uh, formed by various mechanical agents like wind water glacial action etc that is they have marks left behind by these mechanical agents and coming to economic significance of sedimentary rocks sedimentary rocks are not as rich in minerals as igneous rocks they contain very few metallic ores like hematite ore which is an ore of iron and bauxite manganese tin etc and they mostly contains non metallic minerals like phosphates nitrates etc and organic minerals like coal petroleum the most important economic significance is that sedimentary rocks give rise to rich soils which facilitate facilitate agriculture for example the regions formed by sediments carried by ganga and brahmaputra gave rise to ganga plains which is very fertile and gives good yields and the other important rock type is metamorphic rocks these rocks are mainly formed from igneous and sedimentary rocks when igneous and sedimentary rocks are subjected to huge amount of temperature pressure uh, they give rise to metamorphic rocks that is metamorphism is simply change in form where the change is both physical and chemical in nature in metamorphosis recrystallization and reorganization of materials of the original rocks occur and the most important property is there is foliation or lineation in the process of metamorphism grains of minerals get arranged in layers such arrangement is called as foliation or lineation in sedimentary rocks it is called stratification but in metamorphosis morphic rocks it is different and it is called foliation or lineation there is one more thing called banding where alternating thin and thick layers of rock uh, get accumulated in the metamorph metamorphic process 
the best example for metamorphic rocks are gneiss slate schist marble quartzite etc and some important examples of metamorphosis granite which is basically an igneous rock under the influence of pressure gives rise to gneiss gneiss and clay and shale which are mainly sedimentary rocks under influence of pressure give rise to schist sandstone which is basically a sedimentary rock under the influence of heat gives rise to cause a cause that which is rich in silica uh, silica again clay and shale under the influence of pressure give rise gives rise to schist whereas under the influence of heat they give rise to slate which further on further heating gives rise to phyllite and coal gives rise to anthracite we, we have talked that anthracite is a uh, ore of coal which is very rich in carbon and for the anthracite uh, in the in, on, under the influence of heat gives rise to graphite which is 100% pure carbon and likewise limestone under the influence of heat gives rise to marble and the next topic is rock cycle where uh, the primary rocks which are formed due to solidification of lava or magma gives rise to various other rock forms let's see this rock uh, rock cycle in detail and we saw that the primary rocks or the igneous rocks are mainly formed due to crystallization of magma or lava igneous rocks mainly undergoes three changes one they can uh, undergo melting under the in intense influence of heat and they can become magma or under the influence of heat and pressure they become they can become metamorphic rocks and due to denudational processes like weathering erosion etc they can give rise to sediments which further form, give rise to sedimentary rocks likewise sedimentary rocks can be subjected to intense heat and they melt and give rise to magma or under the influence of heat and pressure they to form metamorphic rocks or they can undergo further denudational processes and give rise to another kind of sedimentary rocks and coming to metamorphic rocks metamorphic rocks can undergo weathering and form sedimentary rocks or they can uh, be subjected to intense heat which would give rise to magma thus completing the rock cycle and this is the end thanks for watching